Thank you for joining us to learn more about Why Study Nursing, brought to you by the Admissions Directors Committee of the New Hampshire College and University Council. My name is Anna Miner, and I'm Vice President for Admissions and Financial Aid at Colby Sawyer College in New London, New Hampshire, and I'll be moderating this panel this evening. Due to the pandemic, students have had limited ability to shadow and volunteer to learn about professional nursing. Even HOSA conferences have not been able to take place in person. So this panel was designed to provide information to counselors, students, parents, and families to help learn more about the profession. Many students, unfortunately, have seen only the COVID impact of the nursing profession versus the broader profession and the various important populations it serves. Nurses are critical to our future. I'd like to start out by welcoming our panelists who will introduce themselves and tell us more about their work at their respective institutions and their careers. I'd like to start out with Judy, Dr. Judy O'Hara from Riviera University. Hello, and thank you for being here with us this evening. My name's um, Judy O'Hara. I'm the director of the undergraduate nursing program at Riviera University. I've been at the university for about 30 years and practiced in a lot of different areas of nursing, including um, the cardiac medical ICU, um, oncology, and hospice. So I look forward to spending some time with you this evening. Thank you so much and welcome. Mm -hmm. And Lisa Chico, please. Thank you for having me. Um, and yes, um, I am a full-time faculty at Franklin Pierce University. Um, I actually uh, teach both in their online RN to BSN program and their MSN program. And I'm very fortunate to also um, have time carved out for me clinically. So I still actively practice as an oncology nurse at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. So I think it's a wonderful balance for um, our students to, you know, and for me to still stay relevant and uh, in my uh, education. So thank you for having me. Thank you, welcome. And Dr. Patricia Shin, please. Hi, and welcome everyone tonight. Um, I have been the director of Keene State College uh, for the past four and a half years. Prior to that, well, I started nursing a long time ago, back in the 70s, and graduated from a baccalaureate program and went right into obstetrical nursing. Little did I know that I would end up being a director of a nursing program. But as I continued with my education over the years uh, to the master's degree and started teaching and then to the doctoral level and took on administrative position, um, I have found every step along the way very rewarding and challenging. So welcome tonight. I hope you enjoy the information that we have. Thank you so much. And next, I'd like to welcome Julie Fagan. Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, attending this, this panel and for letting me be part of it. I have been a nurse for 29 years, um, cannot believe that much time has passed. And I was one of those folks who had a college degree and then went back to school specifically to become an OB nurse. So I've been at Plymouth State University since 2012. And my background besides OB nursing is also in um, med surge. And I was a school nurse for a long time. It's a very flexible field, and I have found that at whatever point I either needed to or wanted to do something different as a nurse, I was able to do that. And I think that's one of the real benefits of um, this profession. You will never be bored. Thank you. That's true. And Maureen, please. Hi there. I'm uh, Dr. Maureen O'Reilly. I'm currently the executive director um, of the nursing program at St. Anselm College. I've been at the college since 1982. So can you tell that I like St. Anselm College? Um, I was a faculty member for many years and for the past eight years, I've been the executive director. Um, I started out as a uh, pediatric nurse, uh, then switched and became a maternity nurse and worked in maternity also while I was teaching for uh, 25 plus years. Um, currently I don't practice because I don't have the time to do it in this current position. Um, I'm probably one of the few people here who actually started out in a three-year diploma nursing program. 
went on to get a bachelor's degree and then a master's degree and then a PhD. So I've um, kind of sampled lots of different um, programs and, and did this probably in a way that most people don't do it anymore. But I've, I've loved every minute of nursing, whether it's in the clinical, in maternity with the, the families, um, teaching or you know, in my, in my current position. So um, welcome everyone and welcome to the great adventure that is nursing. Thank you so much. And Kevin Finn. Thanks, Anna. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Kevin Finn. I am the Dean of the School of Nursing and Health Sciences at Kobe Sawyer College. And welcome tonight, and thanks for joining us. Um, so I'm the outlier in the group. Uh, so I'm a non-nurse. Um, my background is in sports medicine and exercise science. Uh, but I've been part of a lot of healthcare development programs across the board uh, prior to joining Kobe Sawyer in, um, in many ways. So um, at Kobe Sawyer, we have an array of nursing and health sciences programs. And I want to echo what others said. We, we have a great faculty who do a lot of in-class didactic teaching combined with clinical practice. Um, and so it's a really unique and great opportunity to, to share with you tonight some of the uh, things that occur at Colby Sawyer College. And, and I'll highlight in some of my questions later, but the enhanced partnership between Colby Sawyer and Dartmouth Hitchcock Health has been a really rewarding opportunity for Colby Sawyer nursing students to gain some really world-class clinical experiences um, that I'll share with you tonight. So welcome and look forward to chatting with you all. Thank you so much. So we have a few questions um, that we'll start out with, and then we'll also be able to answer any questions that might come from the audience through the chat. But one of the first questions we want to talk about, and this came up during our introductions, you know, I think for, for some high school students, I think they, when they think of a nurse, they picture the emergency room and the trauma and, and the chaos and, and, and the fast pace, but, but there's so much more to nursing. Um, you know, I would love to, to, to hear a little bit more about the different types of, um, and areas of nursing. And I know, Pat, you had a couple of thoughts that you would like to share about that. Yes, thank you, Anna. Um, certainly, as I think Kevin and a number of folks have mentioned, Maureen and all, that nursing doesn't just have one angle. And yes, a lot of it we see on TV and realistic or not, um, that's not the life of every nurse. So for example, I started out in obstetrics and once I graduated, I moved with my little U-Haul trailer down to New Orleans and I worked night shift labor and delivery in New Orleans. And that was just a wonderful place to start. From there, I learned to um, work with the newborns and that was a whole different angle of obstetric nursing to go from mothers delivering to working with babies. Uh, from there, then you go into pediatrics. Some of our students love children and they come with that as their end goal to be pediatric nurse specialist. Um, the other areas that you sometimes don't hear about are like psych mental health. We, um, our students go over to Brattleboro Retreat for a weekend, a long four day weekend of psych mental health. And folks that aren't real excited about psych mental health sometimes come away from that experience very enthused for that angle of our profession. Aside from um, inpatient nursing in a hospital, there are a lot of options outside of the hospital. And one of the big ones today and that is growing because of our healthcare situation is home care. We're looking for a lot more nurses to go out and work with patients in their home or people in their home because we don't want them to stay in the hospital any longer than they need to. Hospitals are places where you will certainly recover, but you have a good possibility of picking something up. I know in maternity, particularly, we want to get those babies out quickly. We don't want them to hang around in the hospital and expose them to other ba bacteria and germs and viruses, as we're all aware of. So uh, certainly home care is a wonderful uh, option. And then like most of us or all of us, we've continued our education. So that opens the door to a lot of other options. As soon as you have a master's degree, or even when you've started your master's degree in the state of New Hampshire, we can hire you as a clinical faculty. And then as you get your master's degree, we're looking for people to be educating the next generation of nurses, the future of nursing. And then as we have gone further to get our doctoral degrees, I didn't 
get my doctorate until I was in my 50s. So I put that off for quite a long time. I wish I hadn't, but I was having fun playing with moms and babies in the hospital. So uh, just there are all kinds of different angles. A nurse researcher, you can work in clinics, you can work in any kind of a healthcare field or industry, um, employee health nurses. So it just depends on what you want. If you want to do night shifts and the high pace of labor and delivery or EDs or ICUs, or you want to have more of a Monday through Friday with weekends and holiday off schedule, then you look at those jobs that accommodate what you want in your life. I always tell the story. I have an aunt who uh, became a nurse late in her career and quickly realized the ER wasn't for her. And now she's a triage nurse and she thinks it's the greatest job ever. So I always talk about that. That's what she loves to do. Um, did anyone else have anything else to add um, about any other possible areas, Maureen? Well, I was just gonna say, um, you know, some unusual places, there are nurses who work in prisons and actually our students go to the prison the state prison in New Hampshire. And at first when we started that, we were a little leery about how students might react. And it has been just a fabulous experience. Wow. Um, and students have really, really liked it. So um, just again, something you wouldn't necessarily think of um, when you think about nursing. And there are, there are so many different populations and, and that's one I never thought about. So that's a, that's a pretty amazing thing. Um, when we think about um, your traditional undergrads, we talked a little bit about the undergraduates, you know, is, is where you start, whether it's a two-year or a four-year program. But typically, um, when do students start clinicals? Like, when do they first become exposed to patients in a, in a, in a healthcare setting in, in some of your programs? And, and where do they go? Where do they get this experience? Aside from this amazing prison experience that I'm learning about tonight. <laughs> Um, you know, maybe could we start with Maureen to talk a little bit about that? Well, our students, we first of all, we begin nursing courses, nursing courses without clinical um, second semester freshman year. They actually go into the hospital second semester sophomore year to do their foundations um, clinical. Uh, we used to do that in long term care facilities, but with COVID, we were afraid they might you know, be closing down because of that. So last year we started sending those students in the hospital uh, and they had a great experience. Um, and then every semester after that, they are in um, a different area, med surge, maternity, critical care community, um, you know, through their preceptorship one-on-one uh, -on -one with a, a nurse out in the community. Um, and they are everywhere. They're in all the local hospitals as I'm sure most of the other um, schools have their students. Um, and also lots of lots of community agencies, schools, um, visiting nurses, et cetera. That's great. Kevin, talk about a little bit about Colby Sawyer. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Anna. Um, yeah, sure. So uh, similar to Maureen, I think we start our nursing courses at Colby Sawyer actually first semester freshman year. So our freshmen uh, in their fall semester start to take nursing courses, non-clinical, but, you know, we call it our NUR 400, 100 level course where they get to expose to the profession of nursing. Um, that's an opportunity also for us to do our, a lot of our academic success program we have at Kobe Sora. So we really work hard with students the first semester to make sure that they're, um, they can be successful in nursing. Um, and so making sure they um, meet with all of our access resources at the college, understand what they can do and who they can go to for help. Um, and then, like Maureen said, they really start their clinical work second semester, sophomore year. Um, and that starts usually uh, right, with, right at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, um, uh, which um, is a trauma one medical center where students do a lot of their clinicals at Colby Sawyer College. Um, and right throughout their four, their rest of their time at the college, they, they rotate through this med surge specialty is very much similar to what other programs have. In addition to the Trauma One Medical Center, a lot of our students go to uh, other community hospitals as well to get experiences um, in those settings, as well as um, home health. Um, we also use Brattleboro Hospital, which is, a, for, as uh, Patricia said, for psych mental health experiences. So um, a wide range of opportunities um, expanding from a Trauma One Medical Center to community health uh, organizations. Judy? 
Thank you. Um, so in uh, at Riviera University, we start our clinicals very, very early. So they're actually in the clinical area first semester, sophomore year. Um, we do go to um, long-term care. We go to um, hospitals. Um, uh, we have a lot of community health um, that the students do also mental health. And then certainly at the very end, um, we have as Maureen had mentioned also a capstone preceptorship. So our typical, we are right off the highway. We're right in between Massachusetts and New Hampshire. So um, we're very lucky right in New Hampshire, right within two miles of us. We have two hospitals. You had a little north. Um, to Manchester, we have two more hospitals, we head up to Concord, there's another hospital, and then certainly to the south of us. For our preceptorship, um, we actually go past Concord Hospital and past Boston if we need to be. So we try to, um, you know, we're very lucky in that we have lots and lots of healthcare organizations where that our students um, can go to. For the benefit of our audience, um, since we have a lot of young people in high school, um, they might want to know what the difference is between um, a clinical rotation and a preceptorship. Could you define that for them? Sure. Um, so a clinical rotation is typically you'll go with a, a faculty member into um, a site, whether it might be on a medical surgical floor. And what happens is you're there and you, you know, the instructor is there to kind of help guide you and be there with you. As you grow within the program, your final senior year, we want to transition you into the role of a nurse. And so uh, we sit down together, we help you decide what would be the best um, place that you would go and work one on one with a nurse. Um, so in our program, our students um, choose between um, medical surgical, ICU, um, ER, um, OB, um, maternity, and um, PD. And so we try to place you in different. Um, different areas. And many times what happens is it's a win-win situation for both the organizations as well as the students. Many of our students end up getting jobs. So let's say, for example, I want to go to X hospital and I would love to work there in their oncology unit. The student, the hospital gets an opportunity to see how do I like this person <laughs> and you a good fit for me. So many of our students end up getting jobs right where, do, right where they do their clinical preceptorship. It's a great way to transition from the role of having an instructor to the role of um, being out there one-on-one -on -one with a nurse preceptor. Great, thank you. And let's talk a little bit about um, some of the unique benefits of being a nurse. Um, it's a unique profession. It has unique timelines and different places for people to work. Um, Lisa, could you speak a little bit to, to that, to kind of what are some of the unique aspects of being a nurse? Sure, I'd be happy to. You know, I think all of us so far have sort of alluded to those benefits and um, I think we all would agree that it is a wonderful profession. Um, I think that, you know, when you think about nursing, I think the first thing that comes to mind, of course, um, is, you know, there's a real flexibility with that nursing provides, um, not only when you think about, um, you know, in some of our audience may be a little bit young to be starting to think about a work-life balance, but <laughs> pretty soon, you know, life is going to, you know, come down the pike. And um, when we start to think about families and supporting those families, um, nurse, the nursing profession really, I think, probably is one of the best professions to help with that. Um, so, you know, you could choose if you are starting a family and have young children at home, might, you might choose to work nights. Um, because that's um, what your family needs at that time um, versus, uh, you know, I think it was um, maybe Pat said, you know, you might choose to work Monday through Friday because weekends are when your husband works or your wife works or, you know, your significant other. So, you know, I think that that flexibility um, can't be understated. Um, and, you know, the other thing, and, you know, the reality is nurses are well paid. Um, they, and I think those salaries, we're going to see, you know, a lot of data showing that's going to increase, um, you know, over the next, you know, 10, 20 years, you know, you're going to see as our baby boomers are getting um, to the age they are, 
older, we are um, an aging population and we need nurses. And, you know, with that demand is going to come, um, you know, I think you're going to see that reflected in salaries. So that's obviously an important thing when you're trying to decide on a profession. I also think I was just reading, um, we were voted once again, 20 years in a row, the most trusted profession. Um, and, you know, intrinsic, I think that that's just a wonderful thing to be able to say that you are that profession that society thinks is the most trusted profession out there. And, you know, I think even with COVID and all of the challenges, I think that nurses are really rising to the occasion and, and taking on more and more leadership roles in hospitals. So, you know, when we think about the opportunities that nurses have, you know, to really, um, really create um, new policies, you know, think about all the policies that are coming out regarding COVID. Nurses are right in the center of all of that and planning of that and leaders in that. So, so those are just some of the things that I think, you know, just excite me um, in regards to nursing and why I, if I was, you know, somebody considering going into nursing, why I would want to do that. Did anyone else have anything else they'd like to add? Well, I, I think there's a lot of mobility as well. Um, you know, I've worked in Connecticut, Pennsylvania, California, Maine, and New Hampshire. And you know, you just you can move someplace and get a job um, quite easily. I mean, it may, you know, it may shift a bit depending on the needs, but we know in the future there's going to be a huge, huge need for nurses. So there is a lot of flexibility just in terms of where you live or where you want to, where you want to go. Kevin? I just would, yeah, I would add to that. I think if there's an interest in working across, across many professions, you know, through interprofessional um, healthcare, uh, you, you as a nurse work across different disciplines, working across nutrition and public health and physical therapy and all sorts of other healthcare fields, which I think is really exciting. And so in the field of nursing, you, you see lots of different other healthcare professionals um, in your role. So I think that is another exciting and, and evolving thing when we talk about in a professional education for healthcare providers, it's only growing into the understanding of working in a team environment um, across disciplines, I think is really uh, something exciting for the profession of nursing. Julie. I think following up on what Kevin just said, um, a lot of students go into nursing with kind of a vague sense of what they think they wanna do as a nurse. And then during nursing school, they tend to really develop this passion for some aspect of healthcare that they didn't even know about before they started college. And from my perspective as, a, as faculty, it's really exciting to watch that happen. There's just this whole development of um, every nursing student, not only personally, but professionally, so that by the time he or she graduates, they have this whole idea of how they're gonna go forth into the world and practice. And then we get feedback from our graduates and you know they've been a nurse for four years, five years, and now they're going into something different. Maybe they started out as a cardiac nurse and they realized they really want to work with, um, you know, in the neonatal intensive care unit. They can do that at, you know, if their hospital has that unit, they still get to stay working at the same facility, but with a different population. Or maybe they decide they, you know, they want a different schedule and they've been a, a med surge nurse for the past three years. They can go be a home health nurse and they don't have to go back to college. And I think it's that flexibility in that really wide range of um, settings that they can still be that same nurse that they started out at the age of 18 or 19 going to college to become and yet continue to grow as a person. Not a lot of professions really have that and nursing does. And it's, 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 a, it, it's just a really great benefit, I think, of going into nursing. Mm -hmm. That is such a great perspective to share, and especially since this is geared towards students having a much better understanding of what's out there and, and seeing it just beyond what, what might be one lens and seeing all these different lenses. I think this is wonderful. Um, you know, and, and when students start, you know, there's, there's two-year programs, there are four-year programs, and then, 
you know, the, the baseline is the, the RN. Um, but then, you know, maybe a student goes back and become one has their RN wants to get their bachelor's degree, or then later they want, we talked a little bit about leadership and they become administrators or educators. Um, you know, for some of your institutions, you offer programs beyond undergraduate nursing. And what are some of those programs? You know, what is the next step for someone to advance their career in nursing? Um, maybe I'll, I'll just start with Kevin. Um, if you could speak a little bit to, you know, what are the other programs that are available? You know, maybe starting with an RN level nurse. Sure. Yeah. So I think there's there's many different routes to become an RN, which you just highlighted. And and, and at Kobe Sora, we've got um, the traditional undergraduate program, which is many of you on the call are interested in coming to a four year institution to get your bachelor's in nursing, um, and that's a route. Um, uh, we also have at the college um, a bachelor completion program. So these are for folks who have an associate's degree who want to come back, who are RNs and want to come back and get their bachelor's. There's an online option for that, which many of the folks on this call have those at their institutions. Um, and then, Anna, what you said, if once you're practicing as an RN, you've got your bachelor's degree and now you want to go on into a specialty or, or a leadership role, um, there's master's programs. So, at, for example, at Kobe Sora, we've got um, and master's in science in nursing with three different tracks. So if you want to become um, a nurse educator, we have a nurse education track. Or if you want to become a leader, we have a ex management executive leadership track. Um, or if you want to become more even more specialized as a clinical nurse leader, we have a CNL track. Um, so there's, there's programs at the graduate level and, and even at the doctoral level um, as, as we're thinking through, you know, doctor of nursing practice or PhD program. So really the opportunity um, are really across the board. And then I know some other folks on the, on the call have um, nurse practitioner programs at their institutions. And so um, there is such variety in nursing um, at the baccalaureate level, at the master's level, or even at the, the doctoral level that many institutions um, provide students. And oftentimes they're flexible, meaning they're online. So if you are a working nurse, you can get your master's degree online. And so at Kobe Sora, we have online master's programs. And so there are so many ways to further your career and continue in the passion that you have, but you may want to specialize. And so I think nursing does an excellent job at providing um, folks avenues to kind of further enhance their career. And Lisa, Franklin Pierce has some very unique opportunities for education. Yeah, so um, I, at Franklin Pierce, um, we have a few different, so I'll start with sort of our online programs. Um, and these programs, there's our RN to BSN program, um, and that's for the student that has their RN, so typically their two-year associate's degree, and then they decide they wanna go back for their bachelor's. Um, so those folks might look like, um, we have articulation agreements with um, Manchester Community College, that's just an example. So they might go to Manchester Community College, get their associate's degree in nursing, and then decide to go to Franklin Pierce to finish um, their bachelor's. Um, and so there's pathways to do that for those students um, and you know, affordable ways to do that um, because of those articulation agreements, which is a great option sometimes for students and families. Um, so then we also have our online um, MSN programs. So uh, those are, and similar to, I think Colby Sawyer, you know, we have three different tracks. Um, we have our um, uh, education track, we have a leadership track, and then we have an MSN MBA. So those are two uh, business degree um, combined with a master's in nursing, which is really appealing for some students that really want to not only get their master's in nursing, but really want to hone in a little bit more on sort of the business um, leadership side of things um, to really assume some you know, important positions in hospitals um, and elsewhere. So, and then um, we started, um, it's Going on to, we've um, accept, we'll be accepting our third cohort of students in the fall. We're very excited about our direct entry master's program. And this is um, 
a unique program where these students actually have their bachelor's already, but in something else. So when I was deciding to be a nurse many moons ago, I had my bachelor's in psychology. And if one of these programs was in existence when I decided to become a nurse and finally mm. figure out what I really wanted to do with my life, it would have made life a lot easier and simpler. But, you know, that's water under the bridge. But this program so say my example. So I was a psych major um, and I had my bachelor's, but now I decide I want to be a nurse. So in 18 months, um, these students can um, are eligible to sit for the board um, boards and pass their NCLEX exam. Um, and then they also get their master's in nursing education and also get a healthcare certificate um, healthcare administration certificate. So it's, and that's in 18 months, which you can imagine um, that that's a very, I'm sure all the educators on the you know call recognize how rigorous that is and how many um, classes that is. But at the same time, um, it's a great way to kind of um, get to where you want to be and get your master's and do it in a timely manner. So those are just some of the programs that we have, but we're very excited about that. And Judy, you had a couple things you'd like to add? Mm -hmm. Sure. So at Riviera University, we have what's called a mobility type program. We try to meet students and people um, right where they are at. So there may be um, students that are coming from high school that want a um, associate degree in nursing. Um, so we have an associate degree nursing program in the evening. Um, many of those students, once they graduate and they get their um, ASN, they get out and they work. And a lot of them come back to our online RN to BS um, program because a lot of the places where you work will give you some money towards doing that. Um, so it, it does help to defray some of the costs. They have tuition reimbursement. Other students take a pathway um, and that pathway is a straight four-year pathway of bachelor's in nursing. So that's another way to, um, to an RN. Uh, once you have your RN degree, um, as um, both Kevin and Lisa had mentioned, some people want to go on and get their master's. And so we have um, the nurse educator, the leadership, and then we also have a family nurse practitioner, the psych nurse practitioner, which is very, very um, big right now. Um, there's such a need for mental health services in our country. And then um, we have, um, so those are the three tracks that we have. And then we also have um, family nurse practitioner, psych nurse practitioner, leader, and um, educator. So I apologize, that's four. And then we also have um, a doctorate in nursing practice. So um, a little bit, um, you can continue on um, when the time is right for you. So one of the most important things to think about is, is where a student gets started. Um, you know, so what does it take to become a nurse and, and start nursing school? And um, Julie, I think you'd be a great person to answer this. You know, what, what, what are nursing programs looking for in high school students and what kind of students will be successful as nurses? I'm very happy to try to answer this question. It's a huge question. It's also... Um, the focus of my dissertation, which I hope to finish in the next two months. So um, nursing school is challenging. There's not really any other way to describe it. And so I think the students who are most likely to be successful are students who have a really solid background in science. So whatever science classes you're taking in high school, biology, chemistry, um, are probably the ones that will lend themselves most closely to what you'll need to know to take care of patients. Um, math helps. I think be able, being able to communicate effectively, so being able to um, read whatever subject it's in, if it's English or history, being able to pull out the important information and then being able to convey that in writing, in speaking. Um, so just a really good ability to um, comprehend information, analyze it, synthesize it, and then being able to convey that back in some format to other people. Um, students who are fairly self-directed are generally more successful in nursing school. Um, interestingly enough, students who, who take 
uh, challenging classes, rigorous classes and play a sport and can manage all of that, can really organize their time, um, tend to also be successful in nursing school. And I know at PSU, I find that a lot of our student athletes are some of our um, most successful students because they are able to just use their time really wisely, be organized, stay on top of everything and not get distracted by um, all of the things that we all have that we can procrastinate with. So I think that's kind of my, my big answer. Um, that being said, I think even really, really top students feel challenged when they enter college and feel even more challenged when they enter nursing school. There is not really a great preparation um, at the high school level for what college is gonna be like. It's, you've gotta be self-directed. You've gotta be able to think about how to study, how to go to, to class prepared. Um, nobody really provides homework for you. So you have to be able to go to class and think, oh, what do I need to go now and study? What do I need to look up? What did I not really understand? How can I better prepare next time? Students who already like to learn in a group format, so maybe with um, friends, with peers, um, have a, a really good leg up on preparing for nursing school. I say that nursing school is a, is a team sport. Um, you kind of have to, you know, study with other people, um, find a way to quiz each other, find a way to discuss information. So that, and I, I think overall, a sense that if this is what you want to do, you have the capability to do it. And you might just have to draw upon other resources than you've really used in the past. We've been really looking into this at PSU and providing um, more, I think more effective support for students. We have a bridge program prior to, to uh, the first classes in freshman year. We also have weekly Zoom tutoring and face-to-face -face tutoring for ANP, pathophysiology, physical assessment. And as advisors and faculty, we know our students really well. So if we can pick up that, you know, um, you know, Joe didn't do great on the last exam, that faculty is gonna reach out and say, hey, Joe, can we meet? Let's kind of go over what was, what, what, what was difficult for you. Let me see how we can help you. And it's that sort of support that um, successful students also know how to seek on their own. Mm -hmm. If that, I don't know if that answers most of your questions as um, high school students considering nursing yeah. school. It's challenging it, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. I, I would add probably one of the most important things is being able to ask for help yeah. or to receive help when we, you know, we reach out to students and we're always saying, how do we get you to come and see us? Um, and sometimes students feel like if they didn't do well on an exam, then maybe you know, they don't want to let anybody know that. Um, and I know we're always very flexible and we want to you know, work with the students. And sometimes um, that seems to be a barrier. The, the students sometimes say, well, well, I'll talk to my friend about it. Well, you know, maybe your friend's not giving you the best advice or the best help. So, um, you know, we're, I know we're always very open and welcome um, to working with students to, you know, to give them any kind of assistance they need. Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback, Maureen, off that exact same point. I think, you know, we see a lot of students coming in their first semester at Colby Sewer in their first science course, be that microbiology, anatomy and physics, whatever it may be, um, and struggling with that course and then raising their hand or, or looking for help, you know, the day before the final exam. And, and so what we're trying to do at Colby Sewer, it sounds like a lot of other schools are doing, is, is really trying to... Um, provide support early on for students in areas that we know that they struggle in to be helpful. But Maureen, you're right on. It's the students got to, students, you know, being advocates for yourself and, and raising your hand and saying, hey, I, I'd love to, I need help. And, and college universities usually now are doing a great job of providing that support, but it's really hard if students don't um, advocate for themselves early on. And then oftentimes it becomes a little too late and then they get a little bit of a hole. So I'd say to the students in the call, if you go into nursing school and you find yourself ch having challenges, raising your hand, because whatever school you're at is most has the support there for you, but it's sometimes tough to dig that out <laughs> if you don't um, advocate for yourself. So there's a lot of raising of hands. I love yeah. this. <laughs> Just to piggyback on what Kevin said, um, 
and I, I meant to say this earlier that you have to be a good student to get into nursing school. I think um, admissions directors recognize that, faculty recognize that, my guess is you know, school counselors and, and students themselves recognize that. And most students who do well in high school haven't had to ask for help. They may not even have developed study skills because they didn't need to study. And then suddenly they find themselves in, you know, in nursing school at college without those skills. And so when I say that if you, if you get into nursing school and you wanna be a nurse, you're certainly capable. It doesn't, if you're not doing well in a class, it doesn't mean that you can't be successful. You might just not have learned those skills yet. And that's exactly what, what Kevin is saying is that that support is there, whether it's your faculty, whether it's your advisor, whether it's um, the so other academic support services that the college offers, they're there because the truth is we want all of you to succeed. Every single one of you who wants to be a nurse is needed to practice. There is a huge nursing shortage in the United States as well as elsewhere that's not getting better anytime soon. And so if this is something that you feel really passionate about, you can do it. And we are, we meaning collectively, all of your nursing educators are there to help you. You just have to um, know how to, how to look for those resources and ask for, for that help when you're feeling a little bit challenged before you get too challenged and feel like you want to give up because we don't want you to give up. Judy? Yeah, I... I usually tell people that in order, if you really want to, you really want to see if this is really the right profession for you, there's about three different things that I always like to tell people about. One is that think about the person that's the most important person in your life, the person who's always there for you. Who do you want caring for that person? And my guess is that you want somebody who has a heart of gold. They really care about people. You want somebody who's dedicated and studies really hard. So I always say this when I, when I talk to students, if you go to Colby Sawyer, if you go to St. A's, if you go to any college here that's represented, you will find our nursing students in the library, probably more so than anyone. They're in the library and they're working because they know you want to do a good job as a nurse, right? You want to take care of patients. You have patients' lives in your hands. And so that's really important to have that dedication, to have that, just that ability to be with people. As Lisa said, we are, we have been the voted the most um, uh, accepted. Uh, people uh, trust us more than any other profession. That's huge. And we want to keep that up because that's really, really important. So you want to use every brain cell you have. You want to have a heart of gold and you really want to be a worker bee and be very, very dedicated. So think about the loved ones and who do you want taking care of your loved ones? It's a beautiful profession. I've been doing it for so many years and every day I wake up and I'm sure a lot of these nurse educators and administrators can say the same thing. We're just so happy to be able to share the future of what our nursing students, um, our, our future nurses. It's a beautiful profession. Great. So we have uh, a question from the audience and Julie would like to know what classes ideally should she take in high school to prepare for a nursing program? What is the best preparation? I didn't know if we had anyone who would like to answer that. I'm happy to speak to that, sure. excuse me, if nobody else does. Um, sure. You would want to take definitely biology with a lab, chemistry with lab. Um, if you really like math, physics is fine. Um, as far as math classes, um, you should certainly have um, at least algebra one, if not algebra two. If your school offers a statistics class, that will help you when you get to college because um, you'll need to take a statistics statistics class and you'll at least have that background. Um, certainly, um, you know, four years of English and any, any sort of classes that challenge you that you're really interested in that will stretch your thinking and allow you to develop the capacity to learn and appreciate different perspectives. So again, that's where um, history or comparative literature might come in. 
um, just different ways of looking at things and seeing things, um, reading, writing, analyzing, synthesizing information would be really good. Those would all be good, good courses to take. And foreign language, if you like foreign languages, some schools require you to take foreign language, some don't. But I find that taking a foreign language teaches you a lot about um, English grammar, which will um, help you a lot when you're doing any sort of writing in, in nursing school. Lisa. I was just gonna sort of related to that. And I know some high schools in our state have amazing programs where they are kind of you know, prepping um, students who have identified nursing as an interest and they get their LNAs through these programs. And, um, um, and, and I think that, you know, looking back when I was going to nursing school, boy, I wish I had that sort of just, um, and, uh, sorry, an LNA for the folks that don't know on the um, call is a licensed nursing assistant. Um, you can call them CNAs sometimes. There's different ways of calling them, but um, these are the folks that are instrumental um, in many different environments, but in the hospital, you might see these folks sort of helping being um, with um, patients, ambulating, maybe helping to feed patients, um, you know, caring for them and helping nurses out um, in different ways. But by getting that, um, and you can get that in high school, you know, and it really allows you to get some fundamental skills um, and really essentially almost have a leg up um, when you enter nursing school. I, I'll give a quick story. So my, I was in the nursing home. It was my first rotate clinical rotation and I was a nervous wreck, admittedly nervous wreck. I had never been around patients and I had an awesome nursing student with me who was an LNA who was running circles around everybody. She knew how to do kind of everything that, she, you know, so she, I was asked to give a boost to a patient and I thought, oh my God, what is a boost? I have no idea. So of course I used my resources and that is one thing we've talked about on this call. And I found my awesome nursing student friend and I said, what is a boost? And essentially a boost is just, you're literally boosting a patient up in the bed. So, you know, that's an example and it's not an actual class per se, like math or science, but it's a way if your high school has that opportunity, or even if your high school doesn't, you can still pursue being an LNA and getting um, that experience. And I think that's really valuable. And right now they're very much in demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say also taking a language, as Julie mentioned, I, because if you're a nurse out there, you are working with patients who speak different languages. I would say Spanish perhaps is the most predominant, depending on uh, where you are. And I know we offer a Spanish minor for nursing, where students actually take a companion course to our nursing courses in Spanish um, so that they are really conversant. So if you can go out there and say to a hospital, I'm conversant in Spanish, um, that is a huge, huge benefit. Okay. That's great. Any other thoughts or questions from the audience? Any closing thoughts about the future of the profession of nursing? You know, what is there something that, that you see coming in the future for nursing? Is there an area that you feel will be growing or an area that you feel students should know about? I don't know, Pat, you had some thoughts. Yes, when we were talking earlier, I was semi-joking, but, you know, as we look 20, 30, 40 years down the line, which will be the time that you young folks will be in the profession, we are going to need to figure out how nursing will occur in a weightless environment in the space stations. Uh, for example, nurses have got to be everywhere. There's going where there's going to be people, there's going to be illness and need for nursing services. So um, being a little crazy, um, that might be one of the areas you need to think about. And physics would be a wonderful course to have in high school. <laughs> um, but being more realistic about it, uh, I think home health, we're all seeing that, that there are a lot of opportunities for our graduates in the home where you will go out and visit individually, one-on-one -on -one with patients and help them resolve their health issues. So um, I think those are a couple of areas to look at, but um, certainly I'm sure my colleagues here could think of others 
that uh, nursing is involved in the future. Well, I think is informatics is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, and by that, I, I think your generation um, is well poised to really be um, um, very influential. I, I think technology is, you know, um, is continuing to grow and nurses need to, um, you know, I, I know for myself who, you know, I won't give away my age, but I, my daughter who's 19 and my son who's 17 run circles around me as far as technology and are forever, you know, poking fun at me for not knowing how to do something. Um, you are so well poised to um, really lend your expertise on technology to sort of our older generation of nurses who will really look to you um, to make nursing more efficient. Um, we need to continually look at that. Um, and um, as you know, we have more and more elderly that are aging, um, the, you know, we're going to need more and more of your expertise in that area. So, you know, I look forward to that when you join our nursing um, workforce. I think I'd echo off, off of what Lisa said regarding um, in the world of COVID and, and, and telehealth and the idea of understanding how to deliver healthcare in many different ways. And I think, um, you know, broadly speaking, the idea of healthcare um, happening in a personal setting, but also what other ways can it happen in? And so understanding technology, um, like Lisa said, and using technology in the profession of nursing and, and, brought, and healthcare and medicine overall, I think is gonna be something that's gonna continue. And so um, it's one area at Colby Sawyer where we've been putting a lot of our resources is, is increasing our technology. We're looking at a new building for School of Nursing and Health Sciences really to, to teach students in state-of-the-art facilities so you can learn the technology. And then when you go out to practice, you'll be able to utilize that. So um, thinking about telehealth and technology off of what Lisa said, I think is gonna be things that are gonna be coming down in the future of, of nursing and healthcare. This was such an amazing discussion. Um, I know I learned a lot, and so I certainly hope that that our viewers um, have enjoyed this discussion. I want to thank each of our panelists for their time. Um, for for those who joined, I hope that this was beneficial to you and you learned something. Um, and we look forward to continuing the discussion and watching the evolution of the profession in the future. And I want to just thank you all. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.